everyone. My name is Adora Spitak. I'm the author of Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And today I would like to present a little bit of Essay Made Easy, Persuasive Writing to You through YouTube's lecture series that I'm doing here on YouTube. So, Essay Made Easy. So what do you think of when you hear the word essay? A stuffy classroom and a jumble of terms in your head? Or fun, exciting activity? Well, I hope it's fun, exciting activity, but if it's the former, Essay Made Easy will help you, to help you dispose of your dread and write an organized essay. Let's get going. The Persuasive Essay In persuasive writing, a writer takes a position for or against an issue and writes to convince the reader to believe or do something. So, for instance, someone might be arguing for an old city hall or a new city hall. So why do we write persuasive essays? Hmm. Well, have you ever run into a situation where you think that your idea is the best, but other people just don't agree? Well, writing a powerful persuasive essay is key to succeeding in many different situations, and one among them, your test scores. And I hate to sound mercenary, but we can really use persuasive essays to get things as the holiday season come on, and yes, it really is about giving, then instead of begging on your hands and knees, really convince your parents to get you signed by writing a persuasive essay. Sneaky, huh? Or we can use persuasive essays to start or stop programs or actions. So let's say that, for instance, your school has this really cool after-school program where there's tutoring offered, but maybe they're going to stop it soon for some reason, who knows what. So maybe you could write a persuasive essay talking about why this is helpful to students, why it's helpful to you, and why you feel it should remain open and steps the school could take to keep it open. So what are some programs or actions you agree or disagree with? Think about that for a moment, and you can feel free to pause the video and brainstorm some ideas. So what is a persuasive essay? In a persuasive essay, you are writing to convince others by presenting solid, supported arguments. Persuasive essays persuade or convince someone to agree with your position. For instance, if you didn't want the city to build a highway next to your house, you could write a persuasive essay against it. Persuasive essays are great ways to try to solve problems, and our world has a lot of them. So, let's stop and think about deciding on a topic. What's something that you really want for your birthday, or for um, Christmas, or for another holiday, or maybe that you think someone else should get for their birthday and you don't have the power to give it to them? That one would be more generous. Or a problem that you want solved. My topic for my example essay will be why I should get a new laptop. But before I'm going to show you that, I want you to pause this video before and to think about a topic of your own. Okay, great, I see you're back. Now let's get into action, and let's have a look at this, um, some techniques of persuasive writing. Firstly, anecdotes and scenarios. An anecdote is a short story from your personal experience. For instance, if you're a football player, you could say, one time when I was playing football, I discovered that I had a big rip in my pants, I thought to myself, oh well, and kept on going, but, however, it hindered my playing a lot, and this could be maybe a persuasive essay to your football coach arguing why everyone should get new uniforms, because they're really bad uniforms in the first place. Scenarios. Maybe some of you already know what a scenario is. Well, a scenario is a possible situation, something that hasn't really happened yet. In persuasive essays, we can use scenarios to imagine what might happen to a reader to support our position. And if you were watching Campaign 2008 closely in the political races, you've seen probably a lot of scenarios in those campaign ads. For instance, if we were dentists, we could predict how people would react to the reader if he or she didn't brush their teeth well. Or if we were a political party, we could predict how, they, how awful things could be if the opposing party took the reins. So here's an example activity for you, and you can feel free to try to do this. Imagine you are trying to convince your school's principal that students should be allowed to bring pets to school. So if any of you have pets, this might be more relevant to you guys, especially if you're in school as well. So think of an anecdote or scenario that would support your point and convince your principal. 
You may either raise your hand to tell us your anecdote or scenario, or write down your anecdote or scenario. Obviously, you can't raise your hand in front of me, but you can still come up with one. So you can pause the video right now and think about that. Okay, now for examples. People of any age can go out and play a round of golf whenever they want, as opposed to team sports. For example, football, soccer, and volleyball take an entire team of people to play. Now that would be an example, and by the way, this is not something that I personally have any affiliation with. Okay, in that example we just read, the author is giving examples to support his or her point. We can probably tell the author likes golf. Definitions explain words, phrases, or terms that the reader may be unfamiliar with. For instance, the Umpakunk Bureau always makes cool things. The Umpakunk Bureau is the club in the backyard. So maybe the average reader doesn't know what the, this bureau is, and so you have to explain it. Now, this is one of my favorites, statistics and facts. So you hear a lot on TV, maybe they use some statistics like, oh, people had a rise in, in income in the technology industry and they might show you some kind of line graph. So statistics and facts are the numbers, data, and information that help support your idea and or argument. For instance, if you're trying to convince someone not to drink coffee, you could say, in a survey, 82% of coffee drinkers reported health problems. Okay, this isn't real statistic, but um, you get my drift. You can also use facts in persuasive essays. For instance, if you are trying to convince people that smoking is bad, you could use the fact, kids who smoke at an early age are prone to heart attacks later in life, and that is true. So here are some quick tips on researching. When you're researching to find statistics and facts for your persuasive essay, your local library is a great place to start. Libraries should have either a card catalog or a computer catalog, and to find books with relevant information, you can conduct searches on these catalogs or ask a librarian. The internet can be a great resource as well. Online search engines can help you find relevant information. Some good websites for research include the U.S. Census, Census Bureau for Population Statistics, NPR and the BBC for Current Events, and NOAA or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, yes, quite a mouthful, for weather. You can tell a lot about a site from its domain suffix. For instance, .com stands for commercial, like a commercial product. .edu stands for education, like a university or school. And .org stands for organization, like a charitable organization, and .gov stands for government. .com websites may not always be the most trustworthy site to get your information from because they may be biased in favor of a commercial product or service. .org, .edu, and .gov domain services tend to offer more reliable information. However, you can find um, some great information on .com websites as well. And remember to keep track of your sources so that you can cite them and refer to them later if necessary. Quotes. Using a quote from an expert or someone your reader is likely to know or trust can work too. For instance, Dr. Dum Dum from Harvard University reads that so-and-so is a good or bad idea. In a January lecture, he said, I believe this will dramatically do this or that. Okay, obviously I need up Dr. Dum Dum, but for instance, if your mom reads Ladies Home Journal a lot, then you could take someone from that magazine or another magazine um, and have them saying something that would support your point and maybe your mom would be more likely to trust them than you. I'm hoping not, but uh, I hope that you have a good relationship with your mother. Okay, now let's move on to the structure of a persuasive essay. So starting with introduction. And in the introduction, we want to include something called a hook. Maybe you know what a hook is. Well, a hook is the part in the beginning that we use to draw the readers and sometimes it can be an anecdote or scenario or statistics and facts, or rhetorical questions. So introduction, hook, what else do we need? What else do we need? Think about this. We need, yes, that's right, a thesis. Okay, and then next up we have, we always want to support our thesis. So we can have a first supporting detail, 